Hello dear YouTube family and welcome back to Liftoff, your first place where you can find daily news and updates of everything space and everything SpaceX. In today's episode, we will be telling you about the Super Heavy Booster 4 and latest changes. So, what are the improvements made for Booster 4? Let's find out. But before we start, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so that you will never miss any of the updates of space news. Let's not waste a second and move on with the video. The most powerful rocket will soon roar to life at SpaceX's Starbase launch site in Texas. The monstrous Super Heavy Booster 4 will be the first rocket prototype to propel Starship SN20 into orbit during the debut orbital flight test. It is equipped with 29 methane field Raptor engines that can generate over 16 million pounds of thrust at full throttle. Engineers plan to launch the stainless steel spacecraft to orbit from Boca Chica Beach, Texas and conduct a soft touchdown in the ocean near a military base off the northwest coast of Kauai, Hawaii. To prepare for this ambitious spaceflight, they will conduct a series of ground tests. Starship SN20 and Super Heavy Booster 4 will undergo individual testing before being stacked again. Booster 4 static fire on orbital launch mount, hopefully next week, SpaceX founder Elon Musk shared on September the 10th. During an interview with YouTuber, Everyday Astronaut, Musk said that he hopes the launch pad area that includes all ground support equipment and stage zero does not get damaged. For the first orbital launch, our goal is to make it to orbit without blowing up, Musk said in August. And frankly, if the booster does its job and something goes wrong with the ship, I will still count that as great progress. To be frank, if it takes off without blowing up, the stand, stage zero, which is much harder to replace than the booster, that will be a victory. So, please do not blow up on the stand, he said. Stage zero is the launch pad support structures, which includes the launch tower, mount, propellant tanks, flame diverter system, among many other things surrounding the launch pad. On Tuesday, August 3rd, SpaceX rolled its first true super heavy booster from its assembly facility in South Texas, a few kilometers down the road to its launch site. And on Wednesday, August 4th, the company hoisted the 230 foot tall rocket onto the launch pad using a giant crane. SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk was on hand to watch the action. Super Heavy is the first stage of SpaceX's two stage, fully reusable Starship system, which the company is developing to send people and cargo to Mars and other distant destinations. The upper stage is a 165 foot tall spacecraft known as Starship. Starship spacecraft prototypes have flown before. This past May, for instance, a vehicle known as SN15 aced a 6.2 mile high test flight into South Texas sky. Super Heavy has yet to fly, but SpaceX aims to change that soon. The recently moved Super Heavy, known as Booster 4, is being prepped for an orbital test flight, which will also feature the SN20 Starship prototype. Booster 4 will splash down in the Gulf of Mexico a few minutes after liftoff, whereas SN20 will power itself into orbit, make one lap around the Earth, and then come down in the Pacific Ocean, near the Hawaiian island of Kauai. SpaceX wants to launch that mission in the next few months but it's unclear exactly when it will get off the ground. The company still needs to perform a variety of checkouts and tests on Booster 4 and SN20, and there are some logistical boxes to tick as well. The US Federal Aviation Administration is currently conducting an environmental review of Starship's launch operations, and its end date is unknown. Today, and for the second time in five weeks, SpaceX has installed a Super Heavy booster fitted with 29 Raptor engines. Both Super Heavy Booster 4 and the launch mount have undergone substantial changes since they last parted ways four weeks ago. SpaceX teams have been laser focused on installing the vast array of plumbing, wiring and components required to turn the hulking steel structures into functional launch facilities and the largest flight worthy rocket and both certainly look the part. Unlike Starship, which is an expansive skirt section perfect for stowing away sensitive plumbing and avionics. Super Heavy has an unusually short interstage and no real skirt, meaning that all the extra hardware SpaceX has installed over the last month or so is impossible to hide. 
Indeed, when Booster 4 rolled out to Starbase's High Bay facility for the second time on September the 8th, the rocket was blanketed by dozens of new valves. Thousands of feet of wiring and plumbing, pressure vessels, multiple hydraulic racks and a quick disconnect umbilical panel for interfacing with the launch pad. Places for flight terminal system, FTS explosive charges to be installed and much, much more. Additionally, Super Heavy's B-4's second batch of 29 Raptors, installed in late August, also appear to have outward-facing umbilical panels that all the boosters will receive some level of assistance from ground systems while igniting those engines. It's unclear what exactly they'll do, but those engine umbilicals will likely connect to a high-pressure gas system that are stationed on the ground presumably minimizing the already absurd amount of COPVs and secondary plumbing present on Super Heavy. However, Super Heavy will need to be able to reignite anywhere from 1 to 13 of its 29 to 32 Raptor engines in flight for a boost back down and landing burns, potentially explaining the 8 large pressure vessels and 100 plus small high pressure gas lines installed on B4's aft end. Super Heavy will also need to be able to chill, feed and purge all 29 to 32 of its Raptor engines, guaranteeing that the Starship's booster plumbing situation was going to be immensely complex no matter the approach SpaceX took. In addition to Super Heavy B4's newfound complexity, SpaceX also spent the last four or so weeks outfitting Starbase's orbital launch mount with all the plumbing, power, avionics and mechanical systems it will need to function at stage zero of orbital class, two-stage Starship rockets. SpaceX has installed most of the secondary quick disconnect structures that will connect to and feed each of Super Heavy's 20 outer Raptor engines. The main Super Heavy quick disconnect device was also installed and a team has been gradually outfitting and connecting the structure to the plumbing, avionics and the power it will provide boosters. A significant amount of work remains to connect the orbital launch mount to SpaceX's incomplete and custom-built orbital tank farm, which will store, supercool and feed the pad Super Heavy and Starship with several thousand metric tons of liquid and gaseous oxygen and methane. It's difficult to say how close Starbase's tank farm is to being able to support Starship and Super Heavy's testing, which makes it equally unclear what SpaceX's near-term plans are for Booster 4. The rocket may have been reinstalled on the orbital launch mount as a second fit check, perhaps focused on those 20 outer Raptor quick disconnect mechanisms. It's also possible that the tank farm and launch mount plumbing are much closer to completion than expected. Meaning that Super Heavy B4 could remain at the orbital pad until it's completed several crucial cryogenic proofs and static fire tests. Of course, short of confirmation from Musk himself, we'll just have to wait and see. Now that we have come to the end of the video, what do you think about these improvements? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you want to see more real stories, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again. Until next time.